Hate crimes are on the rise in Ontario. Anti-black, anti-Muslim and anti-2SLGBTQI plus crimes are currently under investigation in several communities in and around the GTA. Toronto Police released, recently announced it is doubling resources in its hate crime unit. And the province today announced partnerships with organizations to support 2SLGBTQI plus students. So what is the next generation being exposed to and how can we all combat hate in our communities? To discuss our roles and responsibilities, we welcome back to CP24 tonight Mississauga Mayor Bonnie Crombie, who recently issued a statement on this, Professor Barbara Perry with the Center on Hate, Bias and Extremism at Ontario Tech University, and Fareed Khan with Canadians United Against Hate. Thank you all for making time for this important discussion. Mr. Khan, what do you believe has led to what we're seeing now? A rise in hate crimes, uh, police arresting two people at the Islamic Institution of Toronto today. Yes, well, I think uh, the reason we've seen this increase is because when there were calls previously to take action um, on issues of hate and address issues of white supremacy, governments basically politely listened to the people calling for that but didn't take the real action necessary. A lot of this has been, um, uh, a lot of this, uh, these requests have been made repeatedly by groups like ours and other anti-racism activists and, and anti-hate activists. And yet, governments did not take it seriously. I mean, they would uh, they would um, listen politely, but when we asked for concrete, decisive action and leadership at uh, the government level to tackle this, uh, we didn't get that. Now, Mayor Crombie, in your own city, you issued a statement after videos circulated of a pride flag being burned last week, allegedly by students in Peel. And in your statement, it says this incident hits very close to home for me. I am a proud parent of a 2SLGBTQ plus son, and I can only imagine the hurt and concern an act like this could cause families with 2SLGBTQ plus children. Could you expand on that, how the hate crime impacts the families of the victims as well? Well, absolutely, and thank you. And I really pride myself on being mayor of such a beautiful, diverse city. About 56% of residents here are born somewhere else, list a different country as their home. And, and we are the most warm, welcoming, inclusive city, and we celebrate everyone. But that's not to say that there are not incidents of hatred. And we saw one, of course, last week with the pride flag burning. I took the opportunity to raise the pride flag at City Hall today. And I know the impact it can have um, on an uh, LGBTQ2 plus uh, IA individual. It, you know, that it can cause shame and hurtfulness. It caused severe pain. Later in life, these individuals have mental health issues and can't realize their full potential and live their authentic selves. I mean, there are so many vast complications you don't think of when these kinds of acts are undertaken. And we see the rise of hate crimes everywhere. We see them targeting the Jewish community, the Muslim community with Islamophobia, uh, the Asian community. We've seen that. And now here, sadly, in Mississauga, we saw this incident against the gay community. So it's imperative for leaders in our community, especially the politicians, and I'm going to stand up and say, uh, I've acted and we need to do more. We've listened enough now is the time of action, and we have taken concrete steps here in Mississauga to address some of these issues. Mm -hmm. Now, some of these hate crime investigations, they involve children, right? So, Professor Perry, how do we make sense of what is happening right now if these kids are responsible? Well, I think there's a, there's a role for education there. Um, and, uh, you know, people have said, well, it all starts at home in terms of turning the tide. But the problem is that many of the kids are learning these lessons at home. So, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of parents are intervening and are trying to socialize their, their youth uh, in the right way to Canadian values, which is, you know, respect for diversity, inclusion, uh, that sort of thing. But I think our, our schools, we need to build in curricula uh, around the communities that are, are most affected by this. And, and that is, you know, lessons about those communities, but also lessons about the impacts of hate. Because I think that's one of the issues. People, especially youth, don't think about the consequences of their actions. And I think we need to, uh, you know, provide those reminders uh, of, you know, exactly what it does. As, as the mayor said, uh, you know, it's, it's not just short-term impacts, it's long-term impacts. And it's not just an effect on the individual victim or individual target, but actually on the whole community. This is something that I study uh, quite extensively. That is the community impacts of hate crime. Uh, so, you know, when one Muslim uh, person is attacked, that sends a, you know, a message to the whole community. We're certainly seeing that in the aftermath 
of the horrific London attack where, you know, I've heard from so many uh, Muslim people now saying, I'm afraid to leave the house. Uh, and 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 that's uh, you know it means we need to support um, the the targeted communities as well. Yeah, and perhaps the education portion could help on the empathy side of things here. But Mr. Khan, I want to ask you. You know, we we hear plenty of condemnation from politicians. We saw it last week in London. But what more should we be demanding from our elected officials when it comes to hate motivated issues like this, crimes like this? Well, uh, politicians are very quick to step up to a mic and camera and show empathy. We saw that last week in London. We saw that in uh, January 2017, after six Muslim men were killed uh, in a mosque in Quebec City. And yet, uh, when we asked governments to do something, um, there was a polite reception, and, and that was it. We basically got, basically got thoughts and prayers. The thing is, is that not just the targeted communities, not just Muslims and, and, and Jews and uh, LGBTQ2 people and uh, black and indigenous communities need to um, pick up and pressure politicians, but all Canadians who want to live in a peaceful, diverse, inclusive society need to basically put pressure on politicians. We're expecting a federal election this year, and I can tell you that uh, we're going to be calling out um, those politicians who have basically been there to, um, you know, give the uh, the photo op and the PR statement, but have not been there when there have been uh, calls for action. We had two leaders, federal leaders, stand in the House of Commons, the Conservative leader and the uh, Bloc Québécois leader, uh, last week and talk about uh, Islamophobia and how this is unacceptable. And yet in 2017, around the M103 Islamophobia motion, they actually voted against it. And uh, cons a past conservative leader, uh, Andrew Scheer, was only too willing to overlook um, racist uh, comments and activities by members of his caucus. So we have to say, uh, as Canadians, that no, you know what, enough is enough. We're not going to have this anymore. And I wonder about that, you know, the political jurisdiction. When you hear uh, political leaders uh, condemning acts from all over the place, but then when there are le there's legislation, like you're pointing out, Mr. Khan, nobody wants to weigh in on what's happening outside of their home or their community or their jurisdiction. Uh, Mayor Crombie is the elected official on this panel. What steps have you taken to combat hate yes, and build inclusivity? Thank you. We've taken a number of steps for sure. And certainly the Muslim Council of Canada is calling on a national summit on Islamophobia and on these issues. And I've called out and I commit to participating. We are the only council in Canada to pass motion 103, Ikra Khalid's motion on Islamophobia. We passed another motion calling out uh, discrimination, Islamophobia uh, against not only uh, Muslim community, but uh, uh, Indigenous and other racialized and marginalized groups uh, during the uh, stabbing at the mosque in Toronto. Uh, for the black community, I've created a black caucus. We've passed another resolution, 207, that has a number of steps and a number of actions that we are taking. I established a black caucus that we meet regularly every week. We are undertaking black community engagement sessions. One of the most popular was on police reform and SIU reform. Um, and, and in addition, uh, we did a diversity and inclusion survey right here at City Hall to learn more about the demographic profile of our employees, which we, I will admit that we have some of the best employees and they work so hard. However, we want that, we want City Hall to be a microcosm of Mississauga, which is one of the diverse, most diverse cities in Canada. And we have a lot of steps to achieve that. And with respect to, uh, you know, those that will self-identify as LGBTQ plus uh, uh, IA, uh, you know, what we found was that only a very small percentage, 8%, um, would identify uh, as being from the community, and another 11% refused to answer the question. We refuse mm. to respond. Mm. So there is clearly a lot of work to be done, but there are concrete steps that every level of government, including myself at the municipal level, can take to call out racism, discrimination, particularly against racialized and marginalized communities in our cities. And Mayor Crombie, we saw your tweet uh, just a few minutes before this panel began of the, the lighting up in, in honor of Pride Month in Mississauga this evening there. We're showing that tweet right now. Professor Perry, I want to turn to you, though, because what kind of conversations, you kind of hinted at the education side here in your first answer, but what kind of conversations should we be having with our own families about this very important issue? 
Oh, that's a that's a really good point. Uh, I think the, the the important thing is to have the conversation. I think we're very fearful of talking about race. We're fearful of talking about gender identity and expression, uh, sexuality, all of those hot button issues. Uh, and I think we need to become comfortable with that. Uh, and if we, as parents, uh, are, you know, don't feel like we have the knowledge. I think we have the responsibility to learn uh, so that we can have those conversations and perhaps to engage, uh, you know, the, the teachers in the school district uh, to assist that, right? And, and, you know, providing perhaps some workshops for parents um, to help them to negotiate, uh, to understand the language, because the, the language my generation uses is very different uh, than the language that, uh, you know, school, the high school uh, generation uses. So I think that's, that's a starting point for sure, is to be on the same page uh, in terms of terminology. But, um, you know, if you don't feel like you have those resources, I think it can be very difficult to, uh, to engage those conversations with our, with our children. So uh, we have to find a way to provide those tools to, uh, to parents and, and family members. Well, I appreciate this conversation. I'd love to have all of you back to keep it going because, unfortunately, this is a trend. Uh, Fareed Khan, Professor Perry, and Mayor Crombie, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having us.